Welcome to Tech Brother with Ahmed. Today we are going to learn how to load multiple flat files into SQL Server table and after loading them, archive them by adding date time to them. And uh, let's uh, see some uh, flat files what we have. So we have uh, three files here, customer file underscore AS Asia, uh, customer file underscore EU Europe and customer file underscore NA you know dot txt so we have these files so what is our requirement every time we get these files on daily basis you know at nightly process and then we need to load these files into sql table okay that i already have created with id first name last name and phone number and address so we need to load the data into this table and after loading we want to archive them by adding underscore date time to them and move to the folder I have already created one folder called archive folder okay so let's find out archive folder here okay so right now there isn't any file in this archive folder because we haven't loaded any file and we haven't moved any file so let's create SSIS package and then do the step by step how we can achieve this so the very first step is create new SSIS package and this one we are going to say load flat files files and archive them archive them okay um, you can give a reasonable name in my case it's just random name I'm giving right now okay so the very first step is what we need to do we need to read the flat uh, flat files or text file from our input folder let's create a variable where we can save this uh, folder structure or folder path so we can call it input folder okay and then this is going to be string okay let's create another one and uh, call it archive archive folder okay so these variables are going to hold the value for the folders okay let's go back here input folder copy this path come back and provide the value okay and now let's take the path for archive folder and provide in the SSIS package to the archive folder variable okay so we have two variables now what is our next step first of all we want to read these files and load them to the SQL server table so what we can use we can use for each loop container to read these files and load into SQL Server table and then we are going to archive them after load so the very first step go to collections and we are using file for each file enumerator so we are not using this folder path here because um, I don't want to hard code anything I want to use the variable so we can change the values of those variable by using configuration in different environments such as production UAT or SIT while we will move the packages to different environments okay so the directory is our folder okay input folder so evaluate that and then hit ok so in the expression we have provided the folder path to the directory property the next part is what exactly we want to read it to in my case the files are going to be text files so I'm gonna leave asterisk dot asterisk that's fine and I'm going to read only the file those those have extension txt okay and what I will read I will read the name and extension of that file okay so we are not reading from the subfolders and we are only want to read from the main folder so I'm not hitting this uh, uh, checkbox okay so let's go here now the file name and extension has to be saved somewhere so we are creating a new variable call it file name okay and this is going to be string as well this is the variable that's going to hold the value on each of the iteration for our file name and extension hit ok the next step is loading these files to the SQL server table okay uh, let's make it a little big so we can have some space to load the files into SQL server table we need to use data flow task inside the data flow task what we need we need a source that can read from the flat file that is going to happen flat file source okay so let's make a connection make a new connection and browse to the file right now we we can select any file the actual goal is reading the metadata information for this file 
and uh, as these all three files have the same information or definition and that that's that that will be you know uh, that, that's fine and that will be overwritten each time our for each loop is going to provide us the new file name with each iteration okay so you can point to any fun for now and then uh, um, hit okay uh, do provide text qualifier if you have it uh, you know if a header row delimiter that's fine a uh, skipping row if you are so you can provide it here uh, column names in the first data row okay I have the column name in the first uh, row that's fine and then uh, going to the next uh, columns and I can see the data is coming correct I can go to advanced and I can change the data type of the columns or the names if I need it okay in this case uh, ID is integer so I have changed to the sign integer first name last name uh, I'm gonna leave this one as it is uh, for for my phone number I'm gonna change this one to 10 as I have created the, the, the table with this definition okay so if you go to my customer table you will see that I have ID integer first name last name and address are 100 but in um, flat file source is read at 50 so I'm fine with that and phone number is 10 okay let's go here and retain null values if I'm getting any null values I want to convert if I'm getting any blank values I want to convert them to the null so I click that one uh, columns I see the columns everything come in correct okay so next uh, is loading the data to the to the destination so we are loading the data to the SQL server table I can use OLADB destination and then make a connection to the table okay double click and then go to new and uh, as uh, the connection is already available I can use this one or I can create a new one so you have to provide the SQL server instance name and then uh, you have to provide the database name okay so this is my server name and uh, the database name is test DB test the connection everything looks good great all right so now the next part is select a table in which the data is going to be loaded it is customer fine and then we have the mapping so if the input column is uh, is have uh, have the same name like a destination column it will match automatically and map it if not you have to do some manual work in our case first name and last name are not the exact in the source and destination so we have to uh, map them manually okay hit okay so what's going to happen now our for each loop is going to read the file you know uh, loop through the files one one at a time and bring us to the data flow task but inside the data flow task if you see our source or connection manager is pointing to the one file okay what we want to do we want to change that one with the with the file name variable so each time it should get the new file name so let's click here go to the properties of file uh, flat file connection manager and then uh, we have to find the expressions okay inside the property what we are looking for we are looking for connection string connection string is a complete path of a file that includes folder structure or folder path and file name with extension so we have to provide that one okay so what we have here we have input folder from where it is going to be read and then we have to provide the file name so I'm going to add the file name okay right now there is no file name and the value in, in the file name variable is nothing so that's why we didn't see anything here but it evaluated correctly fine hit ok now this uh, SSIS package is ready to load the data from uh, flat files into the SQL server table okay let's go he, uh, back here um, truncate our table you know and uh, select some data we don't see anything let's uh, run the SSIS package and see if it is loading correctly okay so the package completed successfully good so let's go back in SSMS and run the SQL query and see the data yes so the files are loaded successfully that's good news for us okay so let, I'm gonna truncate this table one more time now we know that we are able to read the files and load them successfully in SQL table after loading we want to move them to the archive folder okay to move the files to the archive folder what we need we need a file system task this task is going to help us to move the file so we are going to connect the data flow task to file system task so each time file is loaded we want to move that file okay 
let's double click and see what are the requirements so the very first thing what we see here it is asking source connection okay is the, your file is coming from some variable yes we know that it is you know we have the file name variable and it's in com is a complete path but right now what we have we have a separate path for our uh, full folder path and we have file name so we need to make that connection and uh, put it here so how we can do it we have to create a new variable called input full full path okay so what is this this is going to have input folder plus the file name so that's what we want to move okay so click here on the expressions if you don't have SSDT you have can press F4 that will take you properties and then you can go to expression and write it okay so we have a input folder plus or concatenation we want to concatenate the file name so this is a complete path of a file that we want to move okay so one thing we have it that's correct so what we can go back here and say is the source path variable that's true source variable which is holding complete path of uh, our file okay so that's input full path fine now we do not want to copy the file what we want to do we want to do rename file okay what we are doing we want to rename and move the file at the same time so we have to select rename file good okay what is next is destination path variable yes we want to have that okay and if the file does exist you want to override it yes we do want to override it and destination variable what is my destination variable It's archive folder plus the file name and I want to add the date time to it I don't have that complete path in any of the variable right now so what I have to do I have to prepare that so let's hit OK and come back and create a new variable and call it full archive path okay so this is also going to be string type all right let's go to the expressions what we want we want to have a f archive folder okay and then what we want we want to add let me see I make a mix mistake we have to add, use the addition sign here okay so I have put this one the next part is file name okay so I can get the file name from here fine but if you guys know that I have to put this one here okay I, right now I don't see that anything here alright so what I want to do I want to come back to this one and um, for now I want to provide a, a sample um, file name like let's say test file because I want to evaluate my expressions to make sure it's working correctly okay so I'm going to the full archive folder one one more time you know now if I will see I can see that how it is evaluated okay so you can always provide the file, um, file name and uh, value to that variable just to evaluate it because it will be overwritten the, that value test uh, or text.txt is not going to be used okay you can delete it later or you can leave this one as it is when you run the SSIS package it will be overwritten okay so you have this archive plus this one I do not want to have .txt at the end because I have to add date time to it okay so I want to replace this value replace comma what I want to replace .txt okay and then uh, with what just blank okay double quote double quotes okay now I have the file name left only what is my next step I want to add the date time to it so I can use the get date function but problem is get date when I try to evaluate it it's saying I cannot um, concatenate this value to these your already expressions because they are not compatible okay so I am going to convert the this date time to the string dt underscore str and I'm going to have 50 value comma 1252 that's a collation code okay so I am able to concatenate the values now but I should actually put underscore between the date and file name okay so what I'm gonna do 
I'm going to add double quotes here underscore double quotes plus sign okay let's try again okay so we are able to put it the very next step is that I want to get only the date and time from it I don't want a milliseconds and nanoseconds all the way so I, I, I can remove that one so I can use substring okay and I can get the, the only parts so of 1 comma 19 that's going to give me the first uh, part of that date and time in second till seconds so okay next one I want to remove these hyphens uh, you know from the date so I can use the replace function again okay and I'm going to replace the hyphens with no space double quotes double quotes okay and next part I have uh, sorry uh, here it should be hyphens I, I remove the colons I'm gonna remove the col colons as well though okay so I have removed the hyphens from the date part now I wanna re remove or replace actually replace the colons with the no space so I'm going to put comma, double quotes, colon, double quotes, comma, double quotes, double quotes without no space. Okay. So now I have a date and time added to it. Okay. I, it's, it's my choice. I can remove this one and uh, this space. I can also put underscore if I want it. So depending upon your requirement. Then at the end, what you want to add, you want to add the extension back. Okay. So now your file will be something like this file name plus the date plus time in hours minutes and seconds and you have extension at then okay so we have uh, created uh, this variable and then a road expression on that that's going to have hold uh, the complete uh, connection string for our uh, archive file okay now let's go back to file system task and then uh, what we need to do here we need to select that variable full archive path okay now let's run the SSIS package and see if the files are loaded successfully and move to the archive folder okay so SSMS no record is there good so we are uh, and we go to the archive folder N no files are there so fine let's uh, run our test okay so the files are loaded successfully and the moved correctly to the um, RK folder. So the very first thing, let's check the table if the files are loaded. Okay, so the files are correctly loaded in the SQL Server table. That's a good thing. Next, uh, they are moved to the archive folder. You can see the archive folder here, and the the file names are uh, you know appended or uh, the part date time is added to them and they are moved. Let's go to the input folder and see if they are there. Wow. So they are not there. Okay. So that's how you can create a, a package that will read the data from different uh, um, files and load them to the SQL Server table or Oracle or any other destination. And then you can archive them by using flat file source. Thanks very much for watching this video and see you guys next time.